Hi there, I am Ray Gaucher and welcome to this edition of Bible Break. And today we've got an amazing story of uh, two men that uh, were obviously different. One was a man of God, one was a man of power. Yes, we're talking about David and Goliath. We'll be reading out of 1 Samuel chapter 17. And if you aren't familiar with the story, it's just an amazing story on how amazing God can be there even for the smallest person. And if you're going through a trial right now, if you're going through a tough time and you feel like you're all by yourself, remember that God is with you as he will be with David in this true story. So let's open up with prayer, shall we? Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity to read your word. It's always a privilege and a blessing. I ask, Lord, that you open my mouth, my tongue, to speak the truth about this, and that I would convey to those listening the truth, and that you may send a message to those, and maybe even one individual that really needs to hear this. And dear Lord, I pray that everyone listening would hear it, every single word of it, and that you would bless everyone listening to this message right now. I pray in Yeshua's precious name, amen. And if you are a Bible reader, who does not love this story? And if you are a new believer <clears throat> and you haven't had the, as I said, privilege of reading this, we're going to share it together right now. And we're going to pick it up in chapter 7, verse 2, because in verse 1, there's a lot of names I'm going to butcher. <laughs> to save myself some embarrassment, we'll pick it up in verse 2. And I am reading just for those of you that might want to know, out of the Restoration Study Bible, 4th edition, it is based on the Old and New Testament of the King James translation. Chapter 17, verse 2, And Saul, and Saul at that particular time, was the king of Israel. And the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah, and set the battle in array against the Philistines. So here is Israel. They are preparing for war with the Philistines. And the Philistines stood, stood on a mountain on the side, on one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side. And there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. Now, six cubits and a span would say he was roughly nine and a half feet tall. That's a big boy. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very big. And he had a helmet of brass on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. Very heavy. Uh, you'd have to be nine and a half feet with muscles out to here to be able to even carry that around. And he had on greaves of brass on his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron, and one bearing his shield went before him. This guy was just armed. He not only had the strength and the height, but he had um, just a ridiculous amount of armor around him. This man was ready for battle. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine and ye servants to Saul? Choose a man for you and let him come down to me. So here's his challenge. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. So that's his challenge. If you kill me, we'll serve you. If we kill him, you serve us. And the Philistines and the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. This guy must have looked pretty scary. Nine and a half feet tall, all that armor. I don't know if there was too many men that were willing to challenge him, and obviously there wasn't at this particular moment. When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now let's move over to verse 26. And David, who was at that time a shepherd taking care of his sheep in the, uh, in the meadow, spake 
to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine, and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living Elohim? I love David. He's, he's a youth, he's young, he's small. And he's like, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that, he may def that he's going to defy the God of Israel? And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the men that killeth him. And Elab, his eldest brother, now this is funny, here's his brother rebuking David now, heard what he spake unto the men. And Elab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, Why camest thou down hither? Why even come down here? And with whom hast thou left the, left the few sheep in the wilderness? So he's saying, why did you even bother coming down here? And you, what'd you do with the sheep? Like, who did you leave the few sheep that we have with? I know thy pride and the haughtiness of thine heart. For thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. Doesn't sound like he thinks very highly of his, of his brother here. And David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? And he turned from him toward another, and spake after the same matter. And the people answered him again after the former matter. Now when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. So they told Saul <coughs> uh, what David had said, and now here's Saul going, Bring him to me. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail, because of him thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. So here's David saying, Don't, don't let anybody be afraid. I will go take care of this. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he be a man of war from his youth. So Goliath is a man of war, and he has been ever since he's been young. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. So he's saying, Look, I've been attacked by the most ferocious animals, and I went out after him, and smote him, and delivered <coughs> excuse me, delivered it out of his mouth when he arose against me. I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. David saying, Well, look. I went after a lion and I went after a bear and I took care of them. I killed them. <coughs> He's probably saying, what's the difference between them and this man? Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear and hit this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them seeing he hath defied the armies of the living Elohim. David said, Moreover, Yahweh, that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and Yahweh be with you. So here's David saying, God will be with me through this ordeal. And I guess Saul couldn't really argue with him. Um, this young man's on fire. And um, with a man of that confidence and with the Lord by his side, what, what have they got to lose, right? What have they got to lose? Verse 38, And Saul armed David with his armor. So here's Saul putting his armor on David. And he put a helmet of brass upon his head. And he also armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor. And he essayed to go. So he's getting ready to go. For he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these for i have not proved them so here's david saying this doesn't fit me it's too big he's probably dragging his sword probably couldn't even lift the sword um, his armor is way too big it must have been quite humorous for him to try to even move and leave with this stuff and david put them off him so he just took off everything that saul put on him and he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a script. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistines. So he took off all the armor, he equipped himself with a staff, 
five smooth stones and his sling. Slingshot, sling, whatever you want to call it. And the Philistine came, came on and drew near unto David. And the men that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. For he was but a youth and ruddy of a fair countenance. Just a scrawny little guy. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his mighty ones. What are you, you've come here with a stick? What am I, a dog? And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. And then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of Yahweh of hosts, the Elohim of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. It really sounds like David's really upset and angry with, with Goliath because of what he's done against God. Not necessarily against Israel or the armies, but how he has come against God to try to make a fool out of his God. All right, verse 46. This day will Yahweh deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the hosts of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is and Elohim in Israel. Again, this is all about God in, in, in David's eyes. This is what's so amazing about this. And all of this assembly shall know that Yahweh saveth not with the sword and spear, for the battle is Yahweh's, and he will give you into our hands. Just so powerful, isn't it? And it reminds us that no matter how big we are, no matter how small we are, no matter how weak we are, if we have Yahweh by our side, we can accomplish anything. Especially when it comes to a battle against demonic presence, uh, against um, addictions that we have in our life, uh, just against really any battle that we're going through. Elohim, Yahweh will be there with you. Verse 48, And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David. And David haste and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. So here's David running towards him. Not just kind of walking. He's running after him. And David put his hand in his bag and took there a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine that the stone sunk into his forehead. Here's David, he's running with such force, he puts the stone in his sling and he just launches it at, at Goliath to the point where that stone actually embedded itself into Goliath's head. And he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore, David ran and stood upon the Philistine, and he took his sword and drew it out of the sheath. So he took Goliath's own sword and took it out and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. And this is where we end it right here. Just an amazing story when you think about it. Just the courage of David. And the reason why he had the courage that he did is because he walked with God. He was with God. I can just imagine what David was like when he was a youth. Here he is taking care of the sheep and he's fighting off these ferocious animals that are trying to kill the sheep. And that obviously prepared him for the battle with Goliath. And just think how embarrassing that must have been to the armies of Israel seeing this young man defeat this army simply by destroying their, or killing uh, their, their most ferocious um, soldier, Goliath, and they fled. They're just like, <laughs> we're out of here. And it, it's just, 
I, I, I'm sure that must have been an amazing testimony for those that were there that seen it and, and their, their faith in God probably just arose and I can just imagine how pleased God was of David to not only show how powerful he is, not David, but God, in a situation like that, that he will be with you. He will stand by your side during the most ferocious battles, even the ones that seem absolutely impossible. Think about that. Here's a nine and a half foot man. He's full of armor. This guy's got a massive sword, I'm sure. Scared the entire army of Israel, including, uh, including their king. And here comes this young guy who is literally ready to fight this battle, not with a massive army behind him, but simply the word of God. And it's just incredible. It really is. Well, my friends, I hope you've enjoyed this amazing story out of uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17. Uh, for those of you that are new, this is not this is not uh, this is not fiction. It, it is a real thing. It's a real story, and it really did happen. And I want you to know too, uh, if you're going through a struggle, if you're going through a very rough time, as I said before, God will be with you, like God was with David in this situation. Until next time, my dear friends, God bless you all in the name of Yeshua. Bye for now.